In an earlier video, we saw that taurine deficiency is a driver of aging. More specifically, serum levels of taurine decline during aging in mice, in monkeys, and in people. But these are associations. What about causation? So in the same study, young mice were supplemented with taurine. On the left, we've got data for female mice. On the right, we've got data for male mice. And in both male and female mice, we can see that taurine supplementation extended median lifespan. The good news is plasma levels of taurine can be tracked and potentially optimized. So with that in mind, I now have data for six tests for taurine. So what's my data? And then additionally, is diet correlated with plasma taurine with the goal of resisting an age-related decline and keeping it relatively youthful? So jumping straight into the data, we can see those six tests here, and these data are generated with Iolo's Metabolomics Kit, which besides taurine includes data for 600 metabolites, discount link in the video's description. So in 2023, over five tests, average plasma taurine levels were 0.113 millimolar or 113 micromolar. Now, as I mentioned, the goal is to avoid the age-related decline. So after the first test in 2024, which, is, which was in early February, taurine levels were 0.11 millimolar or 110 micromolar. So second, how does about 110 to 113 micromolar compare with age-expected data? So for that, we pull up our age plot from before. Now, based on chronological age, I should have an average taurine level, plasma taurine or serum taurine level of 65 micromolar. But as we can see, I'm higher than expected based on chronological age with 113 micromolar, so that's good news. But it can be better. As we can see, even higher levels of taurine are found even going back as far as infants. Now, is it optimal to have plasma levels of taurine that are at 200 micromolar? I'm not sure, but for now, the goals are to resist the age-related decline and to get it a bit higher than 113 micromolar. So should I supplement to resist the age-related changes and to try to get plasma taurine levels a little bit higher? Now, if you're familiar with the channel, I do supplement, but that's the last resort as I usually use diet as the first past strategy to try to improve all the biomarkers. So with that in mind, can I figure out the intake recipe for my biochemistry to, to resist age-related changes? So for that, we're going to take a look at 90 comparisons for taurine with foods, macro, and micronutrients. So then what's the approach? How am I able to do that? And for those who are familiar with the channel, you're familiar with the approach. So this, will be, this won't be new, but for those who are new to the channel, since 2015, I've weighed all of my food with a food scale. And then I enter those daily food amounts into chronometer and then into a spreadsheet. So each blood test then has a corresponding average dietary intake. In other words, if there's a 50-day period in between blood tests, the average dietary intake for those 50 days corresponds to the latter test. So every blood test has a corresponding dietary intake. And then with enough tests and track dietary data, I can calculate correlations. And after calculating the correlations with the goal of improving biomarkers, I then follow as many of the significant correlations as possible. So if there are 10 significant correlations based on a p-value less than 0.05, I try to follow all 10, as I don't know which, if any, may be impacting the biomarker. So with that in mind, pulling up the top of the 90 comparisons, as shown here, because I can't fit 90 comparisons onto just one slide, it would be too, too, too big and the font would be too small. So on the left, we've got the food or nutrient. On the right, we've got the lowercase n, which is the number of tests, so six tests. And then the p-value, as I mentioned, 0 0.05, less than that being statistically significant. And then the lowercase r, which is the correlation coefficient. And on this list, we can see that only two nutrients or foods are currently significantly correlated with plasma levels of taurine, coconut butter and SFA, or saturated fatty acid levels. Now, note that these are basically the same item because the majority of my saturated fat, fat intake is coming from coconut butter. Nonetheless, these are both positive correlations. In other words, relatively higher intakes of coconut butter or saturated fatty acids in my diet is significantly correlated with higher plasma levels of taurine over those six tests. So with that in mind, with the goal of keeping taurine relatively high, I should aim for the higher end of my intake range. Now note that I, I'm waiting on results for the second metabolomic test in 2024, which I mailed in early March, March 4th of 2024. 
And for the three-week period prior to that test, I had already increased coconut butter and saturated fat intake to an average of 25 grams per day, whereas for the previous metabolomic test, the average saturated fatty acid intake was 19 grams per day. And I did that in conjunction with the LDL Dunedin Pace experiment. And if you missed the why for that, it'll be in the right corner. So then the big question is, will eating coconut butter towards the higher end of my range help keep taurine levels relatively higher or further increase it for the next test? Now, if it doesn't, the correlation for coconut butter and saturated fatty acids will then weaken. And note that after every test, I recalculate correlations and then follow once again, whatever the top correlations are with the goal of improving that biomarker and also all the other biomarkers. I don't want to improve one biomarker and then mess up a whole host of other biomarkers. So whether it'll work or not, results should be in for metabolomics by the end of the month. So expect an update video com coming sometime after that. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, epigenetic testing, NAD quantification, or microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB and Grim Age, green tea, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website Buy Me a Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.